So welcome back to Life of a Kitman. Um, something completely different again today. Um, Matt knows what we're doing. We don't know what we're doing. But apparently this is all about us and not about players. So I'll hand over to Matt, who you'll hear his voice now. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, so as Hoops has just said, we've heard a lot from the players this season. But this is called Life of a Kitman. So it's about time we heard a bit about the life of our two kit men at Swindon Town. Um, so just going to ask you some questions and then the ultimate, the quiz. Oh no. Because you've teamed up this year on the quiz. Yeah. Not done so it's well. It's when about time we up. actually yeah, see. It's about, to right. see. it's about to time to see who out of you two is the ultimate quiz head. Yeah. Who's letting the team down when it comes to playing Don't the Don't start pointing at me as if, like, you're going to be rubbish. Yeah, but you remember and, stuff, man. And all this. You know my memory's trying awful. Trying to get in my head. Oh, you know my memory's awful. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. coming down the line. So, we're going to start with pre-Kitman life. Oh. What did you two do before you became Kitman of Swindon Town? Do you want to go first? Yeah, okay, I'll go first. Um, so, obviously... I was only 18 when I started as a kit man, so I hadn't had much life before that other than your standard school life. Um, so I was working in the shop for a year and a half before I was a kit man. Which shop? The club shop, sorry, yeah. No, just <laughs> didn't, spe yeah. didn't specify that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you um, yeah, so I was working in the club shop um, sort of like on Saturdays and a couple of days in the week while at college, um, studying travelling tourism because... When I was younger, I wanted to be a holiday rep Brilliant. and not a party one. Like also, a, it was a very easy course, wasn't it? Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> easy. For anyone that knows me knows I'm not the brightest. Um, so, yeah, did travel and tourism um, while I was working in the club shop. And then, obviously, kit man at the time left. And me and Steve were sort of just plodded in this room together. And the rest is history. The rest is history. So while he was working in the club shop, oh uh, the tender age of 18, How that long have we got? How far do you want me to go back? Just, just pre, just um, for Okay, I did the normal jobs. I did your supermarkets. So I was selling mobile phones, doing that kind of stuff. Um, then there was something called the credit crunch and a recession in your, this country. Showing your age now. Um, and that cost a lot of people their jobs, me included. Um, so... I had picked up a lot of skills, like from jobs um, and running shops and stuff. Um, and I was also coaching football, uh, football in the community, actually, just over the way. Um, they were actually up where the academy are back then. Um, and I figured, what could I do with my time? Because I had no job, had nothing to do. So I put both sides of what I was doing together, a bit of business stuff and a bit of football stuff, and created my own coaching company. Um, did that for a few years, then Charlie Austin... The main guy contacted me. I'd been recommended to run his football school for him. So that was massive for me and the couple of guys that were helping us out. Was this the one that was in Hungerford? Yeah, so we were Hungerford, Wiltshire, um, Southampton Way, London, Gloucester. We were just everywhere for f about three or four years. So it kind of explains why you and Charlie go back well beyond. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So that's where that link comes from. Um, I was also coaching part-time... Uh, at another club's academy. Mm. Come on, Graham. <laughs> Bristol City. Mm. So I was. I, um, up, I banter him daily. About every this. day. Um, for Swindon fans out there, when Bristol City won the league and the Johnson's Paint Trophy, they called it the double. That's not a double. That's rubbish. Um, when we all had our photos and stuff with the trophies, I had my Swindon key ring hanging out of my pocket so that there was a Swindon badge in the pictures. And then they cropped all my pictures to the waist so they couldn't be seen. So that was. Is there a picture of it out there? Have you, uh, read, it? Have you read it? Yes, I think one of the coaches has, That's and amazing. he's also got a picture of me trying to steal a trophy to bring it down here because <laughs> we ended up in the playoffs, and I was like, no, we need a trophy. So, uh, yeah, I was doing that. Then I came to the club to work in the academy here. Had, I was literally in there for six months, um, and then the kit job came up. Um, Charlie had moved clubs, so couldn't be at all of the events and stuff. So we kind of stopped the football school element. And then when this job came up in and around the club, then I just kind of jumped at it. And I met Jonah in here. 
And we and both we started go. at the same time, which was... Was it a job that was advertised just for one person and then they no, no. took there were, you down? There was, there was there two no people. Yeah, there were two people before us. Okay. Um, but they sort of both left that first half of the season and then somebody had taken over for a month. Um, but obviously... He didn't have a great time. No. Um, forgot the boots for training. So that was That was my of, first ever day. So. That was kind of the end of him. Right, yeah. talk us through that. Your first day, you're in here and mm. someone forgets the boots for training. Yeah, well, so obviously we went to the training ground and I didn't have a clue what was going on. I didn't really know what a kit man was at the time. Well, I obviously had heard of a kit man, but I didn't know what it sort of entailed. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it was the day after a game. We played Exeter on New Year's Day. Or, yeah, I think it might have been the second, actually, for some reason. It wasn't on New Year's Day. And um, coming the next morning to help, and we were at the training ground. And as the players were going to get their boots, there was none to get. So they couldn't go out and train. So we were in the sports hall. And that was my first day, so that was quite eventful. And then he didn't last much longer. Much and longer. Yeah, a couple of days later, met Stephen here. And um, yeah, that was that it. Was that. I, li- I basically had rang the guy who was helping to run the academy at the time and said, is there any work around the club? Because obviously I didn't have anything else going on other than my academy stuff. Um, and yeah, that just happened to coincide with it being the same day that the kit man had forgotten the boots. So therefore there was an opening, let's say. Imminent. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I needed the work and they needed someone to do the kit. And there was so. literally nothing in, like, I say nothing in this room. There was nothing that was... Like, of any use. You have any use. Like, this whole corner here, there was, like, for anyone that's watching on the video, there was, like, a big sort of, like, unit of all, like, shelves here with kit from years and years back that just couldn't be used. piles and piles there of kit. There was, like, no cubby holes here. There was just, like, piles of kit, obviously, where there had been a few different kit men, horrible. like, and nobody had properly sorted it. And now we've finally, like, a few years on, I've got it into, like, yeah, there was no skirts or anything, so we've got it to how we want it now. So that moves me nicely on to the next question, actually. Other than remembering boots for training every day, what was the biggest challenge and biggest learning curve you guys had in this job, having not been kit man before? Can I go first? Yeah, you go. Um, it was like the interaction and understanding the environment. So a football environment with football players and staff and people that have only ever been in football it's a completely different place to any other job you'll ever have completely different interactions with people like all sorts of stuff goes on that that you just it would never happen anywhere else and just kind of I don't know being able to just let things go and just relax and understand that if you're being bantered then it comes from a good place not from a bad place, you know? People talk about bullying this and this, that and the other, when actually that might look like it on the face of it, but in reality, it's because it's coming from a great place. And it means... It sort of means that they like you, doesn't it? Yeah, of course, of course. And that's that's kind of how it works in this environment. So that that was like the thing. I mean, I'd done a bit of the environment stuff with the coaching, but nothing like a first-team environment in football. Well, when I actually started, because I was still, like, studying, I actually started this job as an apprenticeship, which is mad. Like, God, yeah. I bet no other kit men have done an apprenticeship. Well, maybe they have, I don't know. I feel like that was only done to save money. Yeah. So uh, every couple of weeks I had a woman come in, and I actually had to, like... You were off upstairs for lessons or something? Yeah, yeah, I was having, like, lessons while, like, washes were going on and stuff. And I actually had to write lists to show evidence of what I was doing. So, like, if we had an away day, I had to, like, write a list and, like, to a show checklist. organisation. And, and now, because of that, I'm, like, an OCD, like... <laughs> lists everywhere. Honestly. There's lists <laughs> everywhere for everything. I mean, it may be more organised, but I am a nightmare. Steve, like, can't stand me because... I'll be oh, like, I'll well, be no, 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 can't stand, sorry, I can't stand me. <laughs> like, we'll be, like... We'll be, the, we'll be 20 miles down the road. And I'm like, have we got this? Have, have we got, got this? Have we got, I'm like, mate, and, it's too late now. And I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I check my list like so many times. Oh my God, he stresses himself out about it. And then he gets tired because he stressed himself but out yeah, that, about it. But like, just going <laughs> to that, the question that was asked was like, just 
how much they're worth to remember and how important like the job actually was. I didn't actually realise that like all these little things are so important. Yeah. It, but the, you've got to keep a grasp of reality as well. It's yeah. important here. It's important to these people. In the grand scheme of the world, it's not, yeah. it's not important. And it, as long as you keep that kind of mm. understanding, then you don't get too bogged down with it. You don't get too stressed with it. Because, be honest, like if you forget someone's shin pads, what's the worst that's going to happen? They'll just borrow someone else's. Like if you forget an Under Armour, well, all right. You haven't got your Under Armour, but it's not the end of the world. Do you know what I mean? And then by being a bit more like that, you tend to remember everything anyway. Yeah. Because you're just more relaxed about it and it allows you to... Yeah. But he doesn't relax ever. No, we get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you guys are pivotal to the seamless working of what goes on out on the pitch for the management, yeah. the players. If you guys weren't doing your job well and those things weren't, then they oh. have things to worry about that shouldn't be worried about exactly. in a weekday exactly and things that. like that. Yeah. So they can concentrate purely on what they need to do. And perform. And that's performing and the on the pitch. Yeah. So, um, we've taken a few fans' questions as well, because you put out a, a post on all your socials. Yeah, we did. Um, asking fans to ping in their questions. So one of the first ones I'd ask is, um, what's your favourite, oh, obviously we know the county ground, the setup here is fantastic when it comes to this room, the kits around, etc. What's your favourite away day ground that you visited in terms of what the changing room's like, the kit men there, the setup, etc.? Mm. In terms of the actual change room and size, it would have to be MK Dons. It's massive. Oh, it's but nice, isn't it? the only problem with that one is, is... You have to go up and down a lift. Painful. So obviously, you've got the skips and all the like, a whole van full of all the equipment. Yeah. Um, and you've ages. got to go up and down a lift. So, yeah, it would be the, the for the changing room side of it and like the actual being in the stadium. It's really easy, but it's just getting it in and out. Yeah. Other than MK Dons. Doncaster. Um, Probably it would have to be Doncaster. It's all flat. It's probably about the it's probably about the same size as MK Don. It's, it's quite not... a distance from where we yeah. park the van. But it's to all where the flat. Room is, but it's all flat. So you and obviously they and... they play rugby there, so they have got like change rooms a lot massive. more. They've obviously got a lot more players, haven't they? Um, so change room is massive. So probably yeah. maybe Doncaster to be fair. Yeah. In terms of ones we've been to. Has anywhere got a setup like this? Has anywhere got somewhere where you can have that? environment that, like, problem is a lot of, like a lot of these teams have, have a training, training ground room, or a training yeah. base so they don't need so to have they've only got a little state. room at the club where they have like some kit um so you've only got a small little room others, i know a lot of yeah. kitmen that come here like come in here and they think oh wow this is decent and obviously yeah. we're opposite the change room in here so it's ideal for us i quite before, before the kit men changed, we don't know the kit men now, um, but this is controversial as well. Bristol Rovers was always a good one to go to. Yeah. You offload at the door, and the first door on your left is the changing room. And it's a decent size, to be fair. Good size changing room. that's the room. first place I had met you guys. Possibly, was yeah. Bristol yeah. Rovers away. The, like so, yeah, you, you come to, in the changing room. Yeah, you've seen the changing room. You yeah. had the oh, music blast, yeah. and that was my first away It's day. a decent size. And it was like, chucking it down with rain outside. Yeah. Yeah. That but also, result that day. The, and the two, the two kit men that were there prior to this year were brilliant. We got on with them really Absolutely well. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Just top guys, always look after you, teas, coffees, biscuits, whatever. The problem is as well with that like question is, like we've been to some other grounds, like we've been to like your Ipswich, your Portsmouth, yeah. um, in the East Grounds, and we didn't actually get to use their changing room because it was due, during COVID. Mm. So during like Ipswich, ground. for example, we were on like in like a bar. <sighs> Peterborough, we were in a bar. The showers yeah. were outside and like... Ipswich, here's one for you. So Ipswich, we were in a lounge, like a player's lounge, on the fourth floor in their main stand. And we had to use the lift to get the stuff up, but we were only allowed to put one, one skip. So our metal tins that yeah. we sit on. We were only allowed to put one of those yeah. in the skip at a time. And one person, because it, like, it was only allowed yeah. a certain amount of weight. Only one human and one skip. So it took. It was like the oldest ages. lift ever, but as a stadium, that stadium was incredible. And oh, there were so incredible. many stadiums that year that were decent, but we, 
obviously that couldn't get into the changing rooms yeah. and couldn't do it. And like there was no fans and all this, but yeah, yeah. Maybe Doncaster or Bristol Rovers. Yeah. And MK Dons if it was. If you it, take out the lift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. This is your chance to out a player now. Oh. Who has been the messiest player in the changing rooms during your time? Or who do you know that just go into the changing rooms, you just know their little Three, section is going to be? one. Frenchie! Frenchie. <laughs> We've had, really? Yeah. He's, the smartest dressed person is yeah. actually messy. Like, yes. It's got to the point where, Matt, like, players have asked to not be sat next to him in the changing room. Because so he gets we, changed, yeah. he has his area, and then he'll use that area and that area. And the players in those areas are going, well, yeah, what are you doing? Like, we've got, it's number order. We always go number order on a match day. Um, we just always have done pretty much. Um, for the whole squad, not just yeah. for the 11. Yeah, for the, the whole, whole squad. squad. Also, so that when we're at Evergrounds, like, you can't, if we get, pop out and somebody yeah. looks, I'm not saying they do, but they wouldn't be able to tell what the start Who of 11. Who was playing and um, all of that kind yeah, of stuff. Because like, that's for, strange for, stuff. For happens. example, Reedy, I think it was at some point earlier in the season, he was like, he, he was obviously number five in French, he was number six, and he's like, can I move? And we're like, well, it's number four, like, not yeah, much we can do. And he's like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ask any player, anyone, they will say French is the mafia. And is it just the change room, or is he like it on the coach to away games, or um, hotels? Obviously, we're not on the coach, but... Not anymore. We used to be, I can't really remember. I can't... Um, yeah, just no, change he, rooms, just, maybe. Yeah, just And even when he's just like sits down on the table to have breakfast, they'll have a bowl and they'll have this and that. And <laughs> honestly, he, he, and he also like, we never saw him buy a pair of boots. So like he would just Everything. be, oh, I don't know. He's just the messier. He's just the messiest. And so, it, so well, him in, the, in the boot room just if, now. Yeah, at if the, you look at his boots, they're all ripped to pieces because he's just... There was one point where he's wearing odd pair of boots. Because he had one broken on each pair, so he just wore the odd pair, the good ones. <laughs> Mad. Crazy. But what a guy. Gonna miss him, man. <laughs> gonna miss him. Actually gonna miss him. Um, right, we're in... We're building up to pre-season and close season now, but pre-season won't be far away. Mm. What does pre-season or close season and pre-season look like for you guys? Do you it's finally time. get some time to rest? Yeah, it's time. Yeah. Like, obviously, we're both having our separate holidays, not together. Not together. Uh, both having our separate holidays and having a good few weeks off. And then it's just sort of... You, you don't go away to a nice Butlins or something together? No. no. You're in set I've just assumed I mean, you're in saying, I haven't seen him for two and a half weeks. Yeah. It's been bliss. Yeah. Oh, He's been texting me, upset. are you okay, man? <laughs> yeah. Is everything but, all right? Yeah, it's sort of just a, sort of waiting until the, all the kit comes in. And then when it's all in and ready to, to be sorted, we do sort of a count up to see if everything's there, anything's missing. And then we can start sort of seeing what the squad looks like and start looking at what numbers people are going to have, yeah. what, what numbers they want. Um, obviously, this summer we'll be getting to know the manager and some new staff. Um, and then we get to we'll be putting all the kit in sizes and printing all if anything's not come up sponsored and stuff like yeah, that. All sorts of and stuff. And then, yeah, we usually come in at least a week or two before all the players just to get sorted. Um, so that when they're back, we're ready to go, and then pre-season's manic, so. And it's just literally a case of going day-to-day -day in pre-season. Yeah. Like, we might get a schedule, but then it will change, and you'll do double sessions, and you'll do a double session with a gym, so it's almost a triple session. You'll be at the training ground, you'll be back here. One day you might be at some yeah. hotel yeah, in, in, a, in a swimming pool having a recovery day. Or... Yeah, or you might get, oh, where have we been before? Where you just go somewhere and train for a day. Yeah. We just, just get told tomorrow we're there. Just to like players be there. change of scenery so, for people. Yeah, so we, it just it changes up all and the time. Obviously we're like, Sounds great for the players, but for you guys, yeah. that must oh, be a logistical nightmare. It's a logistical nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. And Absolutely. obviously, usually it's hot, so yeah. this room that we're in, the kit room, in, in the winter it's the coldest room ever. And in the summer it's like the hottest room ever. So when you've got the heat pressed on as well and you're printing all new. Squad yeah. numbers on training kit and all of that. Stood in that corner for two days. It's not ideal. Well, and you've got to understand, like, as new players coming in through the door, yeah. you've got to understand what their wants and desires yeah, are and how yeah. to 100%. That is build relationships and with yeah, them as get well. Get to know these people yeah. quick because you need to know what they need, what their level of expectancy is of you. Yeah. Because some players won't want anything from us. Mm. They just want the bare minimum. Some Other want players will want everything. 
provided for them. So you really need to like gauge that quick. And then get to know their personalities, to know how they want to be treated and stuff like that. And that's the, that's the best bit of the job for me, getting yeah. to know new people all the yeah. time. Obviously it's sad when people leave, but you get to meet new you people. You also all the time. need to like, um, like get, well thinking back to the break, we obviously, we'll come back a week or so before that. But while we're off, we're off. Like, obviously we don't have... So if we look at the last two seasons, we had the whole season, the playoffs. Then the season started early because of the World Cup. Then we did the whole season. And now we're off. So you've literally had two years, where well, I think we've had about three weeks off in two years. So yeah. it gets to the point where you need a break. And we've had that. I feel much better. Didn't realise how tired I was, by the way, mm-hmm. until I just stopped and then went, wow. And it took me a week of just sitting in the chair or sitting in the garden. Just with your slippers on. With my slippers and my pipe. Um, but no, seriously, like, I was so tired. I didn't even understand how tired I was until I stopped. But yeah, feeling good again now, going on holiday next week, and then we'll be straight back into it again for another 10 months, so... Right, and I know we've touched on La Manga before in some of the pods, but pre-season stories, mm. I know pre-season is full of them, of different things, of players being run through brick walls and things like that. Um, you go to hotels and there's stories that mm. come out of that. What's your favourite pre-season story? Or what's, what can you give fans that maybe they haven't heard before? Okay, um, can I take this one? Yeah. So we... During lockdown, or we had just come out of lockdown, Richie Wellens was gagging for a week away with the lads. Tried to go abroad, couldn't do it. Government were like, no, you can't fly, you can't do it. So we ended up going to Manchester and sitting in a hotel for a week. Mm. Just so that we were somewhere different. We did one training session at Blackburn. Blackburn Rovers, yeah. We went to Livingston St Anne's and ran up some sand, some mm. sand dunes, which is hilarious, because after all the players did it, Jonah was like, oh, that's easy. Yeah, well, I can do Jonah. that. I've been keeping fit in lockdown, so I was back in myself. I, I went on the run with them on the beach. He was, so was dead. Yeah. He got to like the second June and he was like crawling up this sand dune. It was brilliant. Yeah, we, only, <laughs> we were there for what, five days and we trained once. We trained once. And we, but we had free games. Yeah, we played so we, Man United at their training ground. And Reece funny Reece. story, Reese Devine was playing for Man United yeah. that day and Matty Kovar was in goal for them. Yeah. Obviously so, both ended up, well, Reese is here now and yeah, Matty Kovar and come Kovar on Matty was there for a bit. Um, and yeah, and then we played... We played Abby, Abby Hay, Hay and Ashton United. And Ashton United. So two yeah. local teams. Yeah, interesting one. Um, at Abbey Hay, Noel Hunt made an appearance yeah. in a Swindon shirt. Late in the game, yeah. people were a bit tired. He was like, well, I'll give you 10 minutes. Brilliant. Who would have ever thought they'd see Noel yeah. Hunt? <laughs> he nearly scored, he nearly scored yeah. within seconds of coming on as well. Really? Unbelievable. And because Still of where that... They didn't turn to you boys first? No. So you no, of course not. They had Hunty on the bench. So, <laughs> you know. because, um, because of where that... Well, I say ground. It's not really yeah. a ground. It's a ground. It's yeah. A, it's um, not a stadium, but it's a ground. Because of where it was, it was surrounded by just houses. But behind one of the goals was a train track. And they wanted to u- they wanted to use our balls because obviously they were better. And... The balls kept on going over the train track, so I was on a ladder, jumping over this wall, climbing it, and on the train track collecting balls. So I didn't really see any of that game. You literally must have been in all situations to collect balls. Yeah. Like we, we get so when, stressed when we, we lose see, balls. We see well. like training there, <laughs> yeah. like I lose my head. Yeah, sorts. we beat. Well, there's a river at the training. I see ground. one go in the river. In, I'm like, yes. They end up there. <laughs> so I've been wet a few times. Yeah, be on a train track. I remember when I was at training and Wardy did you a solid and was like, right, there's one that's in that massive bush behind the goal. Oh, yeah, Wardy. I'll go, I'll go and get it yeah. for you. He goes over, like, proper effort to get to it mm. and then throws it at you and it's punctured. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play to Wardy. He loves getting involved in all that. Yeah, that's good. He actually loves uh, it. He loves yeah. it. He there's been many a times it. where don't give up on a ball and we don't give up and then we can finally get to it and it is punctured. Oh, yeah. but no, never give up at least ball. you know at least you know 
Never at least you know that ball. you did everything you could to save the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we had a, it was a strange week. Yeah, it was a mad Very week. strange week. Um, so going back to fans' questions, um, what's the best goal you've seen at the county ground? Now, I know we had a bit of a debate about yeah, this beforehand. Did. So when is it there what, a what, what, have we, what have we landed on? Which one are you going to go for? You can pick one and I'll pick one because you weren't even alive. But no, you were alive, just you were probably about four. So I'm going to say the Ben Gladwin one from the Sheffield United game. It flew in, obviously. Oh, it um, flew in. <laughs> oh, did it? Just <laughs> the way it just dropped down so close to his body. and The half volley yeah. that still rising when it hit the net. And how important that goal was yeah. in that game as well. Uh, what a game. 3 0 up in like the first 15, 20 minutes, and then to only to, for it to go to 5 all. Was mad and yeah, crazy, crazy night that crazy yeah. night. What an evening! It's um, like a really warm evening. Yeah, well, isn't it? the sun was like. It's still like it goes down as one of the best ever playoff oh, games, and it's, oh, it it's the most the score, score. your highest score on one. Yeah, um, I got one I want to mention before I go into my one that is. Okay, the top. Okay, you're doing a map. Uh, I'm doing a Frenchie. Yeah, <laughs> the one I want to mention is from the away leg of the Sheffield United game, just because of the importance of the goal. So when Nathan Byrne picks the ball yeah. up just inside their half and he travels a bit and they smash it in the bottom corner. Yeah, it's all bounced. Uh, yeah, and he's kind of hit it. It's just bounced in front of the keeper and gone into the bottom corner. Who I believe was Mark Howard. Yeah. Mark Howard, who now plays at Wrexham yeah. and has his own podcast. It's a good one, that. Kills my away. Where, where were you watching that from? Uh, <laughs> behind the goal. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, and then... Scenes. Absolute limbs. I've, I've never seen anything like it. So there was a video on YouTube... I think it's disappeared. I haven't. I can't find it anymore. Um, but the guy behind me and a few of my mates, uh, he was filming when the goal went in, and you just see us leap over like three rows of chairs. I'm on someone's back giving it one of them. Like it was mad. And then that goal turned out to be so important yeah. because it was five five. That's the goal that put us through. So yeah, um, that was important wise. But in terms of best goal for. People of my age and maybe slightly older, um, Rory Fallon scored a bicycle kick from outside the box against Bristol City. It come in, I think Sean O'Hanlon played a ball in, and he's chested it up to himself and then bicycled it over what about Steve that Phillips. Simon Cox one. Yeah, that's a good goal. That's a good goal, but is it a bicycle from outside the box against Bristol against City? Against Bristol City. True. Uh, at the town end, like, yeah, it was an incredible goal. And I think the same week, Rivaldo had scored one for Barcelona that was very similar. So that was everywhere. And we were adamant at the time, if he doesn't score that goal, Rory Fallon's goal is everywhere. <laughs> but because he scores that one for Barcelona, <laughs> Rory Fallon's goal didn't get seen by anyone. But that's also on YouTube, so go and check that out. Because what a goal, if you haven't seen it. That's right. It wouldn't be a Kitman podcast if we didn't ask you a few Kit-related questions. So... Um, favourite qu- kit both we'll start with your favourite Swindon Town kit first and then I want you to go your favourite all time kit that you've seen Ooh. Ooh. you go first um, or do you want me to go first you go first <laughs> my favourite Swindon shirt is the blue Adidas 442 Charlton away Leeds away sorry Matt it's not mentioning Charlton it's fine. Uh, Leeds away Southampton away Fulham away in the cup just unbelievable shirt, the central badge, like, and so many good memories in that shirt. And that's what makes the shirt, as we've discussed before. Um, yeah, that's my Swindon one. My Swindon one would be the home one that year. Um, so the home one from good year the 9-10 season. Yeah. Um, just probably because I spent the most money on it. I, in lockdown, I spent £70 on one with Charlie Austin on the back. So I'll probably have to say that one. <laughs> I'm, honestly, you have too much free time in, in and lockdown. Too yeah. much money, too much money <laughs> apparently. Yeah, <clearly. laughs> 70 quid on a Swindon F- shirt when you work here. And what's your favourite all time? Like, what's a shirt you've looked at when they've what, watched it? Or? Is it any shirt? International, club shirt, whatever you want. If you've just oh. seen one, you go, oh, that's a bit of me, that. Oh, that's I, I don't. I'm not an Arsenal fan, but I quite like their new one that they just bought out. It's not that though. I like the one with the gold. <laughs> I quite like it. It's 
banter though, isn't it? Yeah. The fact it's got gold on it because they yeah, but that's gonna because win. it's yeah. twenty years since the invention. No, they thought they were going to win the league. Yeah, they, they put gold on yeah, it. Yeah, but and then they it, won works, the it works both ways because <laughs> that Arsenal team was incredible. Yeah, it was. Um, favorite shirt of all time, and it doesn't have to be a Swindon one. This is tough. Um, I'm going to go with. This is difficult, man. I quite liked when Italy. I was just, that's so weird. I was just about to say Italy 2012 Euros. No, when they had that Kappa I really one. Liked... Yeah. Kappa. When you remember Italy when they had the Kappa, Kappa ones and Wales had the same one yeah, but in red? Yeah, but in red yeah. And it was like lycra, it was like skin tight. Yeah, really. And the sleeves were like down here. It's been a nightmare. Mancini. Train, I just think of Mancini when I see that shirt. I love a lot of Italy's kits. Yeah, um, yeah, but. I'm going to go, just because of memories when I was a kid, I'm going to go with Euro 96 England home. Oh, with the collar. With the collar and the and little gaz there. Central badge again. Yeah. Gascoigne 8, Shearer 9, Sheringham oh, 10. Yes. Yeah. I thought the name set on that as well was really yeah, good as well, because it was like a navy chunky, blue but chunky. with like a... With the harsh like a lens. sky blue around it. Yeah, it's but like chunky with the harsh yeah, lines. Really yeah, really chunky, really nice. I'm going to go either Italy like 2012 that. Euros when they got to the final and lost against Spain or 2006 when they win the World Cup. Between them two, I like them both. Just because you're based Italian, on memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah fake, like Italian. fake Italian. Um, Italian. <laughs> I just like those kits because I like the players that played in them. They're some of my favourite players. Um, yeah, I think it's that one. And then moving from tops to bottoms, boots. Ooh. This is a question from a fan. Who had the best boots last season? Who's, whose boots were you like? Oh. Um, Tom oh. Clayton for me. The yeah. Tiempos. I love Tiempos at the minute. I think they're the best boots. He had a nice pair of Tiempos. Nice colourway as well. I like a maroon. colourway was it? Yeah. A sort of maroon one. I think it's it nice. the best way to describe them. Yeah, it's like a pinky. Yeah. I love Tiempos. Like really dark, but I had like a pink. I kept. All, I always said I liked them this year. Yeah. Um, best boots this year. That's tough. I'll tell you who had a, an unbelievable pair of boots, but never wore them. Kieran Brennan mm -hmm. had the Adidas Predator oh, remakes. Yeah, did, oh, the nice. navy blue ones with the pink detailing. I can't. I think they were the Predator Manias, or whichever. But they were incredible boots, and he yeah, had well. them converted, so he had studs. But he just never wore them. I don't know why. I said, I think they were said, a bit loose on his like feet. The, the tongue comes so far down. Yeah, he, like he didn't like the, the feel. Of the but foot, so he felt like he had a lot of space for movement. Incredible or boots. Um, did Glads have any? Glads had a different remake, pair of boots every day. But did he have any remake Predators? No, I don't think he did. White ones. Maybe? He would bring a few like I say old school, like early, like from like twenty ten or something random, but. But yeah, I don't Willow, Willow had some naughty boots. Oh, Willow had some good ones. Yeah. Chaz with his ones with the initials of his yeah. kids on was yeah, really nice. Yeah, nice. Also, he's been wearing the ones, the lilac ones, he calls them silver, but they're lilac, that he wore at Old Trafford when he made a Southampton debut and scored. Yeah. He's been wearing them a lot this year. What do you think of boots nowadays, though, compared to, like, because, I don't mm. know, when I was growing up, some of the boots we had, they were iconic mm. yeah. now it feels like there's so many boots out there they're bringing, for me one personally, out, they're bringing one out every week i've got feels... such wide feet that i have to wear either a tiempo or an adidas like leather style boot i've been i've been in the premiers the tiempo premiers for the last two, I th three seasons i think they're not as durable now because of the material, you see, obviously I don't know years ago okay. how many pairs of boots players went through, um, but some people get a pair of boots and within a week of wearing them and training, they're starting to rip and they've either, they either send them back or they've got to get a new pair. And the amount, some players might only wear two pairs of boots all year and they might be really good, but yeah. I suppose some times the way that people kick a ball. Yeah. They're not durable and they rip. And how they move. And that's and the same with move. a lot. But does it matter? Because I remember Jack Grealish in the playoff final. Yeah. The oh, yeah. state of his boots. It's about I comfort. That, yeah, it's I about think. comfort. And, if, and if, was... if you think you can still play in it. But I just yeah, think, yeah. That, I think it's, they're, done, they're done a lot cheaper these days with the material. But they're more expensive, which is weird. Work that one out. But it's, I think it's the same with everything. Even when you look at kits. Some kits now are just... 
not the same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but no, they, they don't have like, like you'd have Beckham, Zidane, Del Piero wearing the Predators. Mm. You know, there's not a boot like that that people go, oh, do you know what, that'll be around for years mm. and they'll be remaking them in 20 years. And, you know, and then you'll still be using Beckham, Zidane, Del yeah. Piero in the adverts. You know, you've just got all like you just you've got like the new version of Predators, and you've got Tiempos, but they just bring new colorways out every yeah, month. So that's the thing, isn't it? The like just so, just seems so to be the biggest thing. Just so that they bring all these new colorways out. It's because, just for the impulse so, buys. Yeah. It's just for the quick sales, isn't it? It's not. But yeah, no, they're, they're Tom not. Clayton's for me anyway. Tom Clayton's. There we go. Right. I think that's enough questions. We'll save some of the other fan questions for the next time we do this, but. Should we move on to the quiz? <laughs> I'm ready for this. The, the moment of truth. I've been waiting all day here for this. You've been waiting season for this to go head to head. I know you are. Oh, here we go. Right. I haven't got so, a clue what to expect. So, <laughs> so we got 10 questions. Yeah. Look at that. As soon as you said there's a quiz and we're head to head, we're now leaning away. You don't like each other anymore. This is like... This is serious. I haven't changed it once. You have. This is like that episode of Ted Lasso where... The... Oh, don't talk to me about Ted Lasso. Oh, today. come on. I can't. Ted Lasso's Honestly, gas. I can't. Yeah, no, 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 but that's yeah. why. Have you seen this week's? Oh, no. We can't talk about the end. Yeah, that, he's already ruined it for most people online. <laughs> by the same. Oh, yeah, because I'm the only one that's allowed to write on Twitter. <laughs> that's anyway, right. quiz time. Go on, quiz time. So, ten questions. There's a few bonus points thrown in there as well. Um, and then there's a deciding question at the end if you are level on points afterwards. Uh, normally, I'd be keeping score points, but I may need your help on that yeah. one just to keep on top of it. No, I'm, sure we can say, keep, I'm sure we can keep current of that. So, you have to say your name before you answer. Once you say your name, give an answer. If it's wrong, you get frozen out. The other person can answer. Yeah. Like if that. they give a wrong one, then it's back open, the floor's back open. Mm-hmm. Don't have to put your, fa- your hand up, Jayla. Doesn't need to just, up, Yeah, <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> right, so question one. Swindon were joint sick highest scorers in League Two last season. But how many goals did they score? You mean, wait a minute, just to clarify, you mean the season that's just finished? Just finished. Who was six? I didn't know that. Sick highest. But how many goals did they score? I'm going to give you both two guesses for it, and then we'll go for the closest. 82. That's high. Incorrect. Yeah, it's well That's high. I was just thinking goals. we'd scored five twice, so that was ten already. I'm going to go... <laughs> uh, this is tough. 59? Why did I go 82? You're closer, but still wrong. At the moment, you hold the point for closest. So, Jayla, can you go... Best? Six, 64? 64. That means... You win the point because you, no matter what, you'll be oh, closer. Okay, so I'll still so be closer. It's right. between 59 and 64. Oh, so I'll go 61. There we go. Yeah. Why the hell did I go 82? 1 0. 82. Uh, Nick, can I just say something? I, I forgot sort of how many goals we scored a season. I thought 46 games. I thought. Two goals a game, man. Yeah. Well, I know. thought we scored. Well, we scored five twice. So that That's was already true. 10. There were also games we scored none. Yeah. True. <laughs> We can't do that. Even, yeah, but even still, I was quite yeah. impressed by that. Six high school. Yeah, I didn't realise that, to be fair. Oh, so um, it was 61, and my two guesses were 59 and 61. Yeah. I'm well there, aren't I? I'm well there. Do I get double Jumps points? <laughs> no, just a one point. But you can get a bonus point here. Woohoo! There were. Um, how many other sides finished on 61 goals last season? Steve? Um, two. Nope. Jayla, your chance to take a bonus point? Um, Don't you put your hand up. One. Three. So three four teams. teams. Leighton Orient, Stevenage and Bradford. They scored the same as Orient. Yep. Mad. Mad teams. I need to look at the league table more. Right. Question number two. Star of the pod and newly signed contract with Middlesbrough, Solbrun, had the most league starts for Swindon last season. Which outfield player had the next most league Steve Steve, uh, Steve went first. Hutz. And there, Hutton. I knew that, but he also jumped in first. That's so the you go best to, game, mate. You go into a 2 0 lead. Yeah. You get moody just because he goes there. This is, <laughs> this is Jonah, by the way. Everybody, meet Jonah. I knew it anyway. <laughs> 
Right, we're marking the 30-year anniversary of the player final win over Leicester. Woo! Um, a game that you guys liked to play in your quiz last season was naming the team. Oh. This is a test now. Oh. <laughs> Jonah, how old are you? Uh, he was <laughs> minus I wasn't, seven. I, 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 I wasn't even a four. <laughs> minus seven he was. So uh, you've got a massive advantage on this one. I have. But take it in turns. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Name your players. And because he wasn't born, Jonah, you get to go first. Fraser Digby. Well done. Um, Paul Bowden. Sean Taylor. Martin Ling. Colin Calderwood. I was going to say him, but I wasn't too sure. Yeah, he's a captain. Um, Glenn Hoddle. Craig Maskell. You're doing Tough. well so far, yeah, boys. We've got oh, I really four want players left. Nicky Summerby. He's bad, got a yellow card. Three players left. How long has he got, Rav? I was trying to think. He's got some. <laughs> we rattled through those first few, so... We did, we did well there. <sighs> this is where I can't think. Oh, yeah, I, got, I got two. But... That's still... Monker. That was one of my two. Two left. Oh, only two left. Only two left. Um, oh, this is a risky one. Steve White. No, did he not play? He was on the bench. He came on 78th minute. Oh. He said John Moncar, man. <laughs> That's Killed. it. Jane has taken the point. He's got two left if you can name him. So Steve White was one, two people who came off the bench. Who was up front then? Well, Craig yeah. Maskell was up front, but who? Oh no, we yeah. didn't. We didn't play because Hoddle you played as a sweeper all the time. We didn't play with two strikers. One, did we? Yeah, one's a forward, number nine. The other one was a left midfielder. Number nine. It's not Steve White. Steve White. Well, remember back then they were first eleven were the first eleven, one to eleven. Yeah, I know, but like Hoddle had four. He did. And he's even Bo written down here as sweeper. And Bowden had three. and Like, they all had their numbers. Like, who I, 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 I can't think of the other two. Everyone's screaming up there. Yeah, yeah. everyone's yeah. screaming. The older and as soon as you tell me, I'm going to lose my head. Shall I give you them? Yeah. We've got number eight, Ross McLaren. Oh, my God. And number nine, Dave Mitchell. Dave oh, Mitchell, Dave. <laughs> I could see him. Oh no! Hazard, Mickey Hazard was the other player on the bench. Oh, and Mickey, Mickey Hazard. On. So it's two runs. So where was Steve White? Steve Did he left on the bench? No, he was on oh, the he was bench. Came on seventieth minute. Oh yeah, so so he had played in the game. Yeah, we wasn't starting eleven. So we hadn't got because it was it not Steve White that got fouled for the penalty. Yeah. So I did. So yeah, all right. That's what I had seen then. I wasn't going. <laughs> right. Question number four, Joe does half the deficit. Well done, mm. son. So, Michael Flynn announced as a new Swindon Town manager at the end of the season. What job did he have before signing his first professional football contract? Oh, what? <laughs> this is a great This problem. is a guess out of nowhere. So, before we started playing football professionally? Yeah. So, um, I think Barry Town was his first professional contract, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Uh, I'm going to say he worked in a chicken slaughter factory and he slaughtered chickens. <laughs> I love it, but no. No? All right. Do you know who did do that? Mike Dean did that before he was a ref. I did know that. You did know that? Because he talked about that on Golf Peter Club. Crouch. Oh, I don't go for that. He's actually talked about it on every podcast. Um, uh, come on, I've given you loads I'm of I'm going to say working with cars. A mechanic? Yeah, a mechanic. 
Right, you can have one guess each left. It's oh, a God. pretty like general job, like you know, like when you leave school, you want to be a one, two. Jonah. Yeah. A supermarket. No. Oh, Although he did, he, I think he did work in a supermarket. Was he a fireman? Oh, I don't know. He was a postman. Oh, yeah. I'm close. I'm not close. I know. We have to give him one of the red polos next oh, year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. look like a postman. Postman Mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have to get told yeah. to get the polos. Hopefully, hopefully, he can deliver a promotion. Yay. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> well, question number five. It remains two one because neither of you got that one right. Charlie Austin has extended his stay at the county ground, but how many goals does he have in a Swindon Town shirt? This is according to Soccer Base, so... Jonah. Chaz, if I've got this wrong, I apologise, but this is Soccer Base we're talking about. Jonah. Come on, you said your name, say your answer. 46. <gasps> Straight in. Well done. He saw it on Twitter the other day. I didn't. I know he scored 37 goals in this first period. And he scored. This nine is what I'm saying. Oh, I'm saying this one. Yeah. So I just put two and two. To, they put them you both did together. The math. That, yeah. That's the bit I'm most impressed that, about. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I nearly said 45 then. In his interview when he signed his new contract. Oh, here we go. It says that he scored 10 goals this season. What? I thought it was nine, but in the interview, it says 10. So that um, would make you wrong. Yeah, yeah. but. But he didn't. He scored. He didn't. No. Yeah. Okay. It should have been eleven. He should have had the two penalties. Yeah, he should have got double figures. But yeah. right. So Joe just pulled it back to two all. Two all. This is tight. So question number six. Swindon's first win last season was against Rochdale. Can you name the three goal scorers? No. Yes. Um, Jonah. Um. I can't even remember. Harry McCurdy. What the weather was like. I've got no idea. What the weather was like. I don't, honestly, mate, I don't remember anything about these games. That's all. Johnny Williams. Two. And... It was early. What if he doesn't get more? Then you get a chance. Oh, my okay. God. I, got... I, f I feel really stupid for saying this. I think it was Ellis. He scored early in one no, game. But... So, it goes over to Hoops. You only need to name one to, to take this point. It feels like a steal. But oh my God, I know it. It's got to go to him first before it comes back to you. <sighs> I have no idea. Um, Tyree Shade, I don't know. Jonah, wake it. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did bitch while you were trying to say that answer then. I, 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 I have no memory of any of it. All right, Jonah goes three to up. All nah. because he got bloody John Monker. Because that was my next one. And he get, where does he pull John Monker? He's, he's never he's watched the game. Huh? He wasn't even I know. Right. Still plenty of players to play for, don't you? So, Steve White didn't start that game. Question number seven. Name the season based on the clubs playing in the same division as Swindon Town that yeah. year. Here's another one. This is bad, by the way. Brentford, Brighton, Bristol Rovers. Hoops. Yeah. 13, 14. Yeah. Get in. How the hell's he got that? Get like, in. <laughs> there was more than one year where they were we were all in the same league, so I was waiting for the next few. Well, that's... But, yeah, so there are some teams you've in get, that. You've guessed that, right? There are some, te there are some teams in that division so as well. So you said Brentford and Brighton. Yeah. I was like... Yeah, but they were, Brentford and Brighton were Chilton, in... Chilton, Leeds, Southampton. There were some teams that, that year. That's 0 9 0 10 That's 9 10 Oh, no. Yeah, that's 9 10 I've that's got 13 not... 14 down here. Leeds weren't in the league. Nah. Right, we're scrapping that one. We're scrapping that one. Yes. What do you mean, yes? It doesn't mean you get it right. <laughs> no, but it means that you don't. Because that, <laughs> my research may be wrong. I but if you check, in 13-14, the teams that you yeah. had said yeah. were in yeah. the same league. But... Yeah, yeah, but nothing. <laughs> so I actually <laughs> answered the question that Matt asked. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so I lose a point because... It's still yeah. free to... <laughs> Right, question number eight. Right, got you. I apologise. It's all right, Matt, don't worry yeah, about it. I've had an absolute mare. 
Um, question number eight. It's not human, as easy as it looks, is it? Does Puma are a current kit manufacturer. Yeah. Before them, it was Adidas. Yeah. Who were the kit manufacturer before them? Jonah. Um. <laughs> Lotto. <sighs> Lotto. Correct. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, but I can't see it's that. It's it. It's right ahead of us. I can't see that though, can I? Come on. Lotto. Well, these moves changed. <laughs> oh, yeah, <honestly. laughs> This is what he does when he wins. Still, got, still got two anymore. questions left, so yeah. plenty of time. Question number nine: Which season? I'm going. I'm. I'm worried about this now that I've got this wrong as well. Sorry. Right. Which season did four four two become the front of the shirt kit sponsor? Jonah. Jonah said it first. <laughs> Don't know if he did, but yeah, we'll let him have it. We'll have um, VAR on this afterwards. Oh nine ten. No. Uh, yeah, that's come it. on, baby. Uh, it was two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yes. Because it was a lotto shirt. It was that one there. It was the year before Adidas came in. Oh wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pressure. Pressure Four, going to you. Three. Right. Well, this is going to be a quickest finger first, I think. Oh god, you win. Number ten. Yeah. As we all know, you've mentioned it. My team is Cholton. Yeah. Who scored the first penalty for Swindon in the shootout win at the Valley oh in 2010? Jonah. I you can't say your name in yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go for it. John Paul McGovern. Is he correct? The answer's John Paul McGovern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's waiting too long. Wait, yes. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> If you ask a question, wait. No, stop, stop for a second. Oh, I'm so if you excited. ask a question and say it's fastest finger first, and then I shout my name and wait twenty Hang seconds, on. that's not. I was just, I was coolly coming up to the. No, you weren't. Like he did. No, you weren't. Oh, you, I, you I, said your name and then started thinking about your answer. I, 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 I walked from the halfway line slowly. That's not. It's not. That's not right. I've got one right. <laughs> I've got one right where I've then been docked the point. That would and still be fine. You said your name and then waited while you're thinking about the answer. That would still be fine. That's not how it works. People listen to us on the pod. Shall we? Bring it down yeah, a level. That would still be fine. Sorry. That would still be 5 4, wouldn't it? No. Just, no. no, I'm not having it. It, it would still be 5 4. Even if. Right, no, you can have that one. Yeah, you can. They would, wait, wait a minute. I lost a point and then you said your name and sat there for 10 seconds while you thought about the answer. So you're saying it would be 5 all. I'm saying it would be 4 all. <laughs> But there you go. All right, he can have it. It's fine. He can have it. There it's we fine. go. I know I'll get through. First quiz between days. the two of you has ended in chaos. Chaos. And not helped by the quiz master. I apologise. Chaos. But Unbelievable. Oh, well, takes it. It's good. He fun. came from two 0 down. Came from two 0 down to get a four four draw. <laughs> well played, you. I feel like we can't do any more of these. I feel like no. you're going to talk now. Yeah. <laughs> the season. <laughs> We're not going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure, Matt. It's been good fun. Have we enjoyed it, Joan? Yeah. Oh, I have it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah. Cheers, guys. Hope you've enjoyed Cheers it. Cheers for listening, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys.